Last season, we took the ECU Pirates to the college football playoffs for the first time in school history. We had to fight all odds last season, but we were destroyed in the first round by Utah. Going into my fourth year with ECU, I had all the confidence in the world, and with this team looking like this, I knew that we had a chance to get back to the playoffs. The team would look drastically different this season as John Paris would be running our new look offense, which included our star running back Rick Pollock being converted to receiver and our backfield being split between two great players. The polls would favor us as we would begin the season ranked in the top 20, and we were also projected to win our side of the conference. It was now time for our revenge game against Utah, where we would get our first look at our 88 overall team. If we were able to get a win over top 5 Utah, this would be the perfect start to our season as we'd be able to get our revenge. And on the first drive, Sean Paris is looking good as he's making great throws and Derek Johnson got our first touchdown of the season. At the beginning of the second quarter with the ball back, Sean Paris was looking to get Rick Pollock involved as he threw it up to him on the left side working out. With fast forwarding to the third quarter, we only found ourselves up by 3 points as the Utah defense was finally starting to stiffen up on us. But that didn't matter as we got all the way down the field finding our running back out of the backfield. Our defense have been playing extremely well this game as we had only given up 10 points in the third quarter, but luckily our defense was able to make another stop on third down. So we were looking to keep the accelerator on as Parrish found Derek Johnson streaking up the middle and he was able to use his legs getting all the way close to the end zone. And on second goal, we read the read option perfectly extending our lead to 14 as we would end up winning our revenge game against Utah by 7 points. That would jump us up to 16th in the polls and we were playing against an FCS school in Youngstown State. And this game wasn't starting off that well as we were down by 3 points and Parrish didn't know how to control his cannon of an arm. Luckily on the very next play, he was able to connect with one of his favorite targets and Derek Johnson streaking up the seam. And later on that drive, after rolling out to the right side and trying to throw to Derek Johnson, he overthrew him but luckily Brandon Smith caught it. And late in the third quarter we were able to extend our lead to 28 points we would go on to dominate from there in a game where we scored over 50 points we were playing a military opponent in navy in our next one and after our defense forced a turnover we got a touchdown on our first offensive play like always Derek johnson was getting involved early in the game as he was streaking up the middle getting a touchdown and our defense was having another great game as we found ourselves up by 21 points and our defense got a stop on a crucial third down from there Parrish would find rick pollock late in the third quarter and this was a dominating performance over the midshipmen we'd have a much tougher game against top five army and this game would be very difficult as army was the reigning champions and it was at their home play Place where it was raining and we almost recovered a fumble on third and goal but after they decided to risk it on fourth down their quarterback found their running back out of the backfield and we stopped them so late in the second quarter our offense was finally looking to get the ball down the field as we were being shut out to this point army was proving that they were a great opponent as our offense hadn't been able to do much this entire game and paris was able to roll back getting tons of time in the pocket finding zeph carter who was able to get a huge play getting into goal to goal situation and i don't know what it is but our tight ends were just dominating this game with only eight seconds left in the first half on second down army was trying to get into field goal range but we got an interception and on our first drive of the second quarter we were able to get into the end zone down by multiple possessions late in the fourth, Army looked to cut into our lead, which they were able to do after breaking a tackle. And our offense had been stalling out as we were only up by three points with a minute 20 left, but luckily our defense made a stop, leading to a huge key victory and what was a close three-point win over another top five opponent. Thankfully, we'd be back home playing against our rival, FAU. And this game would be extremely important as we had 10 recruits coming to visit this week. We're currently sitting at second in the conference behind FAU. And I was not looking forward to this game because every single time that we played them, we would always have a tough game and they have beaten us too many times. But luckily, Paris was able to find Aaron Maynard on the right side after the bounce back route. And he was able to get a huge 75 five yard touchdown in one of our first plays. FAU is not looking to waste any time as they got all the way down the field in their next possession, but we ended up getting an interception holding their drive short. And only two plays later, Paris decided to throw it up over the top as he found Rick Pollock on the right side and it was a great throw on the money and Rick Pollock was able to get away from his defender getting a huge score. We find ourselves up by seven in the second half, but Sean Paris made a terrible throw to a wide open receiver leading to an interception. So after FAU tied the game, we were looking to get down the field, but Parrish made another terrible read. And all of a sudden we found ourselves down by seven points and Parrish ended up overthrowing a wide open receiver. I was losing my mind on the sidelines cussing everyone out and to open up the fourth quarter still down by seven i think parish has money on this game it seemed like parish was purposely missing wide open receivers but luckily zef carter was able to get open on the right side getting a score so late in the fourth with the tie game we we're looking to get a stop and their receiver dropped the ball and we were looking to keep our foot on the pedal so parish ended up throwing it up to rick pollock and he actually was able to complete this pass by not overthrowing him rick pollock was able to break a tackle on his way to a score from there we would hold on to our lead in what was a close seven point victory over our rival the importance of that game was masterful as we ended up having seven recruits commit to our program and we we're looking to keep things going against the road Runners. Sitting top four in the nation with a 5 0 record, our team was getting cocky as we found ourselves down by 10 points to an 0 4 Roadrunners team, and I had no idea what was happening. But thankfully, our office is finally starting to get things together as Parrish rolled out to the right side, finding Cameron Brown in the back of the end zone. Things were finally starting to pick up from there as we found ourselves only down by three as our defense was finally getting some stops, and Cameron Brown was able to catch this beautiful pass by Sean Parrish, and then he ended up getting tackled by Rick Pollock. But we were able to find Zeph Carter a play later. Our defense continued getting stops, which allowed us to keep putting the pressure on and getting points. It what turned out to be a dominating victory for us. We'd be back in sunny Carolina for our next one against Rice. And halfway through the season, we were currently sitting at number one on our side of the conference. I was extremely confident in this team's ability to go undefeated the rest of the season, but I knew that I couldn't put the cart before the horses. We still had tons of games to play, but our defense was getting a huge stop on third down. And late in the third quarter, down by 15, Rice was looking to try to get into the end zone, but our defense made another play on third and 10. So after holding them to three, our offense was able to move down the field, and Aaron Mater was able to get an easy score. And from that point on, we go on to have another dominating victory. Our confidence was through the roof, and we were looking to keep things going against USF. After being up by seven points in the second quarter, Rick Pollock made his cornerback look silly 
specifically is he had 10 yards of separation. He was able to use his legs to get away from the safety, and you know what he's going to do for the rest of this point. I was having a lot of fun playing with our defense this year as they were making great plays over and over. And before we knew it, we got all the way down the field and we're up by 21. Not much more would happen for the rest of this game as we'd end up winning by 10 points, but our defense did give up 24 points. We were still ranked at fourth in the nation as we traveled to Temple. And in the second quarter, we found ourselves up by multiple possessions as Parrish was able to extend the play by rolling out to the right side and finding Aaron Maynard as he cut back to the middle of the field, getting a huge play. And this team was looking like it had extreme depth as Rip Pollock was also making a big play on the right side. Later that drive, we give it to our running back, Justin Lewis, who was able to cut up the middle for a score. And up by 28 points at the beginning of the third quarter, Aaron Maynard was able to add to our lead in a game where we scored over 60 points. We traveled to Texas in our next win against 0-8 SMU. And with only three games left in the season, we had finally cracked the top three and we were looking to absolutely dominate a winless SMU team and Rick Pollock was able to get off to a big start by making his cornerback miss on his way to a huge score. That wouldn't matter though as SMU would score on their first two possessions, so it would take all the way until late in the first half where we were able to finally get our lead back. We were looking to pound SMU the rest of the way as we had an 11 point lead and Derek Johnson was looking like a grown man and SMU didn't end up scoring the rest of the game. With only two games left in the season, Sean Parrish was sitting at fourth in the Heisman watch and we were looking to keep things going against UAB while we were at home. We would have a plethora of talent coming to this game as we had nine recruits that were scheduled to visit, meaning that this game was more than just trying to keep our undefeated season alive as it was also for the future of our program and Rick Pollock was getting a huge 30 guard play and a couple plays later we found our tight end Derek Johnson for a touchdown. Derek Johnson was proving to be one of the best players on this team as he'd been making plays every single game and there was something about this one where he just continued to get open every play. UAB was trying to make the score look a little bit better as they were getting dominated late in the fourth as they ended up getting a touchdown right before the end of the game but none of that would matter as we'd go on to win in a game where the scoreboard looked a little bit closer than how we played. The recruits that came and visited our school were extremely pleased with our performances we had six of them commit to our program and going into our last game we were looking to beat the mean green North Texas. On the first play of the second quarter we were able to go up by multiple possessions but North Texas was looking to keep things close as they were able to score back on their very next drive. I was disappointed late in the third as we were playing down to our competition as we were only up by seven points even though we were a lot better than them but thankfully Rick Pollock was getting involved in the game as he got a score. Pollock would do the exact same thing on our next possession and from there we'd go on to have a great victory in what was an overall 28 point win. That would lead to us having an undefeated 12-0 regular season and us having a finalist for every single major award. Sean Paris was also sitting at the second in the Heisman watch so going into our conference championship game against number nine Tulane we were looking to get him the Heisman. Tulane's move to the American Conference was extremely important for their program as we had now played them two years in a row in the conference championship and we were looking to continue our success against them as we'd beaten them last year. Our defense was looking to stiffen up on third and goal as there was nobody open and our defense was able to get a sack and we were looking to take advantage from there as Parrish found Rick Pollock on the left side and he was able to squeak away from a defender and get a touchdown. We were up by 18 late in the third and Rick Pollock was able to get open yet again and use his legs to get a score and from there we'd go on to absolutely dominate Tulane and a great way to cap off our regular season by getting another conference championship. Unfortunately for us Parrish would finish second in the Heisman voting but he finished the year off with some great stats with over 40 passing touchdowns and 3,601 passing yards. Justin Lewis would rush for over a thousand rushing yards and our receivers put in some work with Rick Pollock getting over 1,200 yards. It was now time for the college football playoffs where we'd be playing Georgia in the first round and this would by far be our best opponent that we'd played all season long as Georgia was a 99 overall. So thankfully our receivers were making plays and Derek Johnson was getting involved early on in this one. After not finding anybody open, Parrish was able to roll out to the right side getting the first score of the game. But that wouldn't matter as going into the second quarter we found ourselves both tied at 14 apiece. On third and goal after extending the play and rolling out to the right side we found Cameron Brown in the back of the end zone and Sean Parrish was able to break the school passing touchdown record for a season that Taylor Harris had broken only one year prior. Our defense would continue playing great as they ended up getting a stop on the next drive and just look at all the emotion on my face after that stop. We'd find ourselves only up by four points in the second half but Derek Johnson was getting a huge play and I thought at the beginning of the season that Rick Pollock was gonna be one of my favorite targets but it looked like Derek Johnson was turning into that as he got another huge touchdown but late in the fourth quarter Georgia would end up cutting into our lead making it a three-point game. Needing a stop on third and two our defense was unable to get that as Georgia ended up getting the first down and with a minute 25 left in the game only down by three their Georgia running back Hayford ended up breaking a tackle getting a score getting the lead so I was getting nervous about the rest of this game if we wanted to win this game we'd have to drive all the way down the field and get a touchdown with only a minute left in the game so after driving down the field and getting into the red zone thankfully Parrish made a great throw to Rick Pollock that would still give Georgia time back to answer as they had all of their timeouts and with eight seconds left they were able to get close to the 30 yard line after breaking a couple tackles which led to them risking it all by kicking a field goal and their kicker was just short and that led to a huge victory as we had now punched our ticket into the college football championship rule number one of college football is to never trust a college kicker to win a game for you and that's what Georgia didn't do and we were looking to ride the hides off of that with a Zeff Carter touchdown. Throughout our four years here at ECU so far I hadn't called Zeff Carter's name that often but whenever we were in a big game we always called his name at least one time and of course I couldn't forget about one of my favorite players of all time and Rick Pollock on the left side. Our offense was looking good throughout the first half of this game as we were up by seven points with two minutes left and for some reason every single game this man Derek Johnson was somehow open. The Hurricanes would go for it with no time remaining in the first half trying to get a touchdown and after the receiver broke a tackle we ended up stopping them just short but on their first drive of the third half their quarterback was able to run the read option perfectly followed by great blocks cutting into our lead. That would mean that we were only up by six points going into the fourth quarter so now we we're looking to kill out the rest of the clock and we needed some crucial first downs to do that. We had already gotten one third down conversion on this drive and we were able to find Cameron
Cameron Brown on the left side for another one. And on third and six, if Justin Lewis is able to get a first down here, we'd be able to kill out the rest of the clock. So after that first down, we were able to go on and do just that. And a game that saw Derek Johnson, our tight end, become player of the game. And after being in the college football scene for eight seasons, we were finally able to hoist the coach's trophy as the head coach of our ECU Pirates. In the offseason, we had a decent amount of players leaving for graduation, but we had most of our players returning as we pull in the second best recruiting class due to Michigan pulling in five five stars. This recruiting class is looking like one of the best classes that I ever recruited with tons of high overalls, including a couple 80s, and they were looking to fill the holes of the players that were leaving. This is what the team would look like going into next season with Sean Parrish being a 99 overall junior. And after winning two American Conference Championships and winning the National Championship, I decided to move ECU and FAU into the Big Ten, as next episode would be our last episode with the ECU Pirates as we had done everything that we could possibly do with them. And going into next year, we were already ranked at number fourth in the nation, looking to win our side of the Big Ten East, and our team was clocking in at a 93 overall with a 99 overall offense.